In this video, I am going to cover putting together the Maison de la Mode, the house of fashion, which is going to be on the second floor and it occupies all three rooms on the second floor. Now, I'm not gonna cover the things that I had already covered in previous videos, like the general construction, and then also uh, some of the things like making purses and the, and the shoes and um, the glass cases, because I've done videos on those before. And of course, those will be down below in the description area. I'll have links to all the uh, related videos. So let's get started with just some of the basics of inside the rooms. So the, for the basic decor of the room, of course, I've used paper, decorative paper on the walls and the ceiling, and all three rooms have the same paper on the walls. And then the floor is a freebie that I had on my blog for you when I first did the covering the construction and all the stuff that you see right there. I'll post that again for this particular video and the link that goes to my blog um, that uh, corresponds to this video so that it's easy for you to find. And then um, I uh, cut a hole in the center room and that hole is going to accommodate the elevator. Plus I cut a hole in the ceiling of the center room so that you got light through there. And then of course the uh, elevator workings are gonna go up above. And um, I did not put this in this video. I'm gonna have a separate video covering the elevator. And uh, I also am gonna include the other elevator that I built for the steampunk house as well as the staircase. So that way it's all separate and it's easy to refer to whether you're doing this project or you just want to see how to do an elevator. And this elevator will be different than the one I did for the steampunk house. And, and it's uh, actually quite a bit easier. So uh, you might want to uh, look at that when I post that in a couple weeks. And then um, the only change that I've made from uh, what I originally showed in the basic construction video is that um, I have added a uh, some railing that's going to accommodate, uh, go around where the elevator's coming up so that you don't fall through the hole. And so I went ahead and put that in place. And then all of the uh, all of the architectural details that you see, it's the same digital image set that I've been using all along that comes with all the window trims and tiles and all kinds of stuff. So again, that's what you see when you're looking at all the trims. And of course, this has got windows in it. Uh, all three floors have windows, balconies. And so of course, I've used trim to decorate those balconies. Just like with the other businesses, I have a bay window that's dedicated to the House of Fashion. And this is the exact same uh, bay window that I used, kit that I used for the front window of the chocolate shop. So the assembly is exactly the same. And I'll give you a, a timestamp link to that video. And then um, in, the, uh, in the window there, you see that I have some signage like I have for the other windows and where it says uh, Maison de la Mode. Uh, and that can be printed on uh, transparency film. And then you see all the purses and goodies that are sitting on the glass stand. That's one of the glass stands I uh, demonstrated in the glass cases video. Now, other ways or other methods that I used of displaying things were uh, I used some hat boxes. Now, these hat boxes are made out of paper mache. And uh, I have two image sets here. One, I have a new collage sheet that's just like with the other stores has um, bags and this in this case it has hat boxes instead of square boxes and also uh, uh, rectangular boxes and then handles for the hat boxes that you can cut apart and score and fold and glue together so that you can create some custom boxes to go with the store. Now there's also digital kits and in that digital kit you will get the awnings that you see me use on the window that are that have all the the signage on them. Also the piece uh, the signage for the the glass window in the front print it, that you can print on to um, transparency film is in that as well. And in addition to all of the bags and boxes and uh, that you see uh, on the collage sheet those are also in the digital kit as well. There's some posters uh, that are, uh, you know, work with the theme of the fashion house. There's invoices and that are themed for a fashion house. And then there is um, also, um, in addition to the bags and boxes that you can put together, there are also uh, images that you can glue onto those paper mache boxes so you can make it look the same. And that works nicely for the display area because the paper ones might've been a little bit too flimsy to set a bunch of weight on top of. So that was kind of nice for me to be able to cover those, uh, those hat boxes um, instead of doing the paper ones that, that you fold together from, from the sheet. Uh, using that instead to do the display. 
other ways of displaying uh, the items that I used, uh, which you've seen me do this uh, in the other tutorials for the other shops, is that I'm using glass slides and um, a piece of filigree to bend it as an L bracket. And in this case, I used uh, glued two glass slides together because it's the window's pretty deep, so it, it can accommodate two two slides glued together. And then I have used a piece of filigree to um, as an L bracket and then glued that to the back, which is just a piece of chipboard like I've been using for all the windows with some decorative paper on it. And then um, you can also see that I in, in the uh, a previous video where I did all the purses and the shoes and perfume bottles made out of beads, um, I demonstrated most of that. But it, but in this particular window, you can see that I've used some pre-made bottles that are really pretty. And it comes in a set that you see here. And I've used those throughout. And I jazzed them up too. Like I added little mini tassels and little beads, things like that. Um, so uh, that's kind of a, a, another thing that you can add to uh, the perfume bottles, the one outside of the ones that you make with beads using something like this. Now on the um, the awning that you see there, I have added uh, two pieces of Dresden just to kind of give it a little bit more of a dress up. All the rest of the window is, the exterior of the windows are exactly the same. I've used the same mold. I've used metallic stickers. I created panels. So you kind of get the similar look of all the windows, but uh, I've just done a different, different colors. And then of course, um, just a little bit different on each awning with the signage and then in this case make it a little fancier with the Dresden. And then for the lighting inside this is super super simple and uh, I started with the two inch brass ring. Now this ring, ring is made by Darice, it's D-A-R-I-C-E and you can find it in some online stores and I use the two inch version because it's a perfect size to fit inside this window. And all I did was I took these uh, rhinestone uh, chains and cut them up and I actually used two different ones for for ins for the window on the outside, and then I used uh, different ones for the for the inside of the shop. But um, they're basically um, just uh, just rhinestone pre-made a chain that you can cut to length, and I cut it at two different lengths because I thought it would look more interesting. And then with the light inside, it, it causes a lot of sparkle. So I just used E6000 to glue those on the outside of the ring and then glued the ring to the top of the window and then uh, on the inside. And then I've got a hole in the top and then I'm using these little fairy lights that um, I'm twisting up inside and I can poke those through the hole in the top. And that way the, the um, you could pull that back out if you needed to replace it for some reason, if it didn't work. And um, of course you will have the awning that covers up the, the switch and where the batteries are. So it's easy to get to that and um, and change the batteries out. And just like with the other windows, I did not glue it against the building. That way it can be removed so that you can get to that switch. The construction of the inside lighting is very similar to the one in the window. I start with the two inch ring and then uh, cut pieces of the rhinestone chain uh, two links. And in the picture there, you can get a better view of what it looks like with the two different links. And then um, I'm going to be using the fairy lights again. And the uh, at the top of the ceiling there is a medallion. And you can see in the picture the medallion that comes from that architectural detail or um, digi kit that I talked about at the very beginning of the video. And then I also have a piece of filigree that I've punched a hole in. And, and I've also punched a hole, of course, in, in the top of that medallion. And the reason is, is that way I will be able to insert a um, straw that I've painted. And that straw is going to hide the, the chain or the, the wire of the fairy light as it goes from the ceiling um, all the way down that tube and then into the light. And then I've just wrapped the light up in a circle so that it sits right inside of that um, of the chain. And of course, I've, I've glued that to the edge and you get a better view of what that looks like as well um, <clears throat> as I did for the window. And um, so then I, I basically glue the filigree to the medallion and then attach chain with jump rings to the filigree. And then those, uh, those chains are then uh, using a jump ring also attached to the two inch ring. The order of assembly was that I first glued on the rhinestone uh, chain to the edge of the ring. And then I attached the, um, the chain that's going to hang it with the jump rings. If I had to do it again, I wouldn't do that because once you get that chain on there, the, the rhinestone, it's just really hard to get in there with jump rings and not end up 
pulling off some of the rhinestone chain. So what I do first is I would I would I would hook up your your um, your chain your hanging chain with the jump rings onto the two inch and then glue all of the uh, rhinestones around the edge and then that way I think it'll be easier for you um, and then attach it to the uh, filigree the chain the hanging chain to the filigree and then glue the filigree to the medallion and then here you can see there's a hole in the roof and I do not or in the ceiling and I do not um, glue the roof down in place so that I can lift the roof up, roof up and you can see that the straw is sticking up in that hole and that way I can feed the fairy lights down and then of course still get to the switch. Now with this project I needed a lot of ways to display the items and one of the things that I did was to uh, create some panels and then attach microscope slides to those panels um, to uh, give me some more shelving. And so uh, what I did was I just I used a, um, a, a white piece of paper, cardstock, then I used the decorative paper, and, uh, and I mounted both on chipboard, and uh, that was my basic panel. And I put the panel together first, and then um, I began assembling the, uh, the shelves. And to do that, I went a little differently than the L bracket way I've been doing the other ones in that I used uh, these upholstery studs, which I painted silver because I've kind of got the silver gray pinkish theme uh, color scheme going on. And then I, to that, I attached a, um, a uh, rondelle. And now the rondelle's from my stash. And the reason I put the rondelle on there is I needed a little bit more surface area to attach the slide since that slide is just glued right across the edge. And, um, and you can see here that I just kind of did an assembly method. Now I taped the, um, the studs or the upholstery studs down onto the table so that they would move and I could get them each spaced equally so that every, everything was the same. And uh, then I used E6000 and applied glue to the edge of the microscope slide and then put that in place. And then you can see I've just used some paint bottles to keep things propped up while it dries. And I really let it dry um, at least 24 hours, maybe more if you're in a wet climate. And then I went in and added just a little bit more of the, um, of the uh, glue to, um, to the top of the slide where it meets the, um, the upholstery stud. And you don't have to worry about it showing because if you put your items on there, it's going to mask that. So that just gave me just a little bit more support because it's on such a thin edge. And then you can see I've done this um, on the center room and the far left room. You can see I've put these panels flanking each side of the window. And that just gave me a tremendous amount of area to display stuff. And, and it allowed you to see it uh, behind uh, a lot of the other counters and things like that. In the room on the left, you'll see a store counter. Now this is just a unpainted wooden piece that I painted in a white and gray color scheme. And you can see the back of the counter has open shelves. So I, on the left-hand side, I've put in a lot of tissue paper. On the right-hand side, I've used um, some of the invoices from the DigiKit and then also a couple of the boxes. And then on top, you see a cash register. That's something from my stash that I've had for a long time. A few more invoices on the, on the table or on the counter. There's a ring. And then there's a box being packed up with a, with a necklace and a purse. Now, on the other side of the uh, counter, you can see that I have added some paper and all those little inserts on the sides and then on the back or on the front of it. And then also I added some feet painted silver because I just think it jazzes up the counter to have feet on it. Looking further into the room, you'll see a, a display case. This is an, one I, I co uh, covered in an older tutorial, and it's a pre-made case that I've painted. And yeah, I've just filled it with little perfume and uh, bottles and also um, uh, powder boxes, compact boxes, which I covered all that in the earlier video, so I won't go that in detail. And then uh, I'll draw your attention to the book, Elite Styles, the catalog or magazine, whichever way you want to look at it, at the top there. Um, that comes from a new collage sheet that's a miniature fashion magazine slash catalogs and so it's perfectly sized for for a 112 um, uh, sized project and um, there's also a digital kit to go with it and the digital kit also contains um, 
some extra images more than there are on the collage sheet. And I not only used it to make a little book to sit on top of the display shelf, but then I also used it, uh, the covers in the on the sheet, uh, as decoration on some of the shelving. So as you can see here, uh, one of the glass panel shelves, I've got uh, one of the magazine covers there. Now in the room to the far right, there's quite a few display cases. In the very center, um, you can see the display case with a lot of hats and stuff on it. That's another one I covered in the older video, so you can you can look at the details on that uh, via the link I'll give you in the description. And in the back of the room, you also see a couple of uh, uh, glass cabinets standing on legs. Again, those were covered in uh, the older tutorial, so I won't go into detail on those. But all of those are filled with purses and shoes and perfume and all kinds of goodies in the in the uh, in those on those in those cases and on the top case. On the wall on the right, you can see another case, one of the ones that I covered previously. And in this one, I have jewelry uh, displayed inside and, and on the top. And you can see some of the boxes from the collage sheet underneath the hat boxes. And then also, you can see I've, I've done uh, more of the glass shelves. And there's in each of the rooms, there's at least two of the rooms, there's um, some glass shelves like that on the wall with perfume bottles. And then in the center of that, you can see a jewelry box. The little jewelry box is a kit, and you can see here I've laid out the steps and how to assemble it. It's going from one all the way down to six. The first one just assembles um, the, uh, the bottom drawer, and then number two, you can see it put together. Number three, you're, you're building the uh, basic structure of the jewelry box, and then number four, you can see I've kind of laid the pieces out where they, if you stood them up, that's where they fit. And um, so that gives you the basic uh, box. And then the drawer, of course, fits in the hole. And then um, you've got uh, the finished box with the lid. And, and in my case, I hinged the lid on. And then here again, you see the finished box. I used um, black uh, faux suede. And then I also used some of the metallic stickers that you've seen me use on the window trim. And then I also added um, a couple of uh, pieces of, of metal on the sides to act like handles and of course I'm displaying it open and then I've got it stuffed with all kinds of miniature jewelry. Another new collage sheet for this project is a sheet with miniature paper fans and uh, gloves and I've used those in, in various uh, display cases and uh, one of the things that you can do to make the fan look a little bit more dimensional is to print it twice and then cut one of them in pieces and then add some uh, something to pop it up a little bit. I just used a piece of chipboard. I didn't want it to be too thick. Uh, put that behind some of the pieces and then glue them back on top of the fan and you want to skip every other section. So you should, um, you should do the first section, say on the left, and then skip a section and then glue a piece on, another piece on top until you get to the other end. And then that will give you a fan that looks a little bit more three-dimensional and uh, a little bit more realistic. In terms of the gloves, I pretty much did the same thing. I printed it multiple times and then glued them all together in a stack and then inked the edges so that you couldn't see the white of the paper. And then that gave me gloves that looked a little bit more like they were actual three-dimensional gloves. Throughout the store, you'll see various posters on the wall, fashion-related posters, and those can be found on this new fashion poster collage sheet. Um, and those images also can be found on the in the digital kit that also contains the miniature catalog. So that uh, that digi kit has both the all these posters and the catalog plus a few more images. And uh, look here over the counter, you see some perfume bottles on a glass shelf. You can see there's a poster up there. Then uh, down there next to the dress, you can see one. Uh, there's one going over the doorway. Uh, another one is sitting above the hat. Um, there's one sitting above the other hat on the other side. So pretty much any open area that I had, I added some of the posters. Throughout the store, you'll see a variety of hats. And the way I make the hats is to use bottle caps. And I use um, small water bottle caps are nice for the, for the flatter um, hat crowns. And then I also use um, the... Uh, the screw tops off of wine bottles and some of the the deeper uh, thicker ones that you see are, are those types of tops 
And I've covered them with a variety of materials, ribbon, of course, faux suede. Um, I've also added feathers. I've added some beaded trim on two of them. And I will put in the description area, there's a really nice store online that sells all kinds of very beautiful beaded trim and very fancy lace. And I've used some of that on the dresses that I'll talk about next. But uh, it's, it's, they're a little bit expensive, but um, you only need a very little bit for a project like this. So 12 inches goes a long way. Um, so, and then I've also added metal bits, like uh, you see where I've got the green hat with the metal around, uh, metal thing that holds the feathers in place. So pretty much anything you want. If you want a brim, like you see two of them, the pink one and the burgundy one, um, I just use a piece of chipboard and I add that to the bottle cap, glue it on, but you want to cut a hole in the middle if you're going to set the hat on a hat stand like I have so that otherwise you won't be able to get it in there. Throughout the store, you'll see all kinds of dresses that I made. And um, you can see I've used, in some cases, a dress form to make to attach the dress. And then sometimes I'm using a, uh, a paper uh, uh, dress form that uh, I then cover with the dress itself. And then uh, the ones that are made out of the paper dress form, or that's the base that I attach the dress to, um, I've hung those in various places on the inside of the store. And I've done that by attaching the, the dress form to a hanger. And then you see the little hook that I've glued onto the wall. And so um, you'll see those uh, hanging from the wall in, in various rooms. And then the dress forms, I decided that the balconies would be a great place to display the fancier dresses. And so you can see I've got uh, the three dress forms, one each sitting in each on the balcony in each one of the windows. The three dimensional dress forms are just a uh, snap together kit, very simple to do. And for the first one here, the pink dress, um, I started by wrapping the torso with some a pink ribbon over the shoulder because the beaded trim that I added next for the bodice would have been see-through. And so that just kind of made it uh, block it a little bit. And then I glued um, a bit of, uh, I think two layers of pink tulle around the waist and then started gluing feathers in place. And then to cover the feathers, I took a piece of ribbon and glued that around where the fe feathers and the, um, and the uh, bodice, the, the uh, strip of uh, beaded trim uh, met. And so that covered that up and, and kind of dressed it up. For the peacock dress, I um, painted the dress form gold first. And the bodice that you see, that is a, um, it is beaded trim, but what I did is it's a skinny strip. It's only like a half inch wide, but I ended up cutting it up in little pieces because that way it made it a lot easier to place it and glue it onto the, um, onto the dress form in just the way that I wanted. And underneath there is, uh, it's a strip of peacock feathers that I bought at the, at the craft store. So it just comes in a long strip. And the only thing I did to it was I did, um, that the, uh, the top of it had ribbon to keep the, the little feathers in place and it was really thick. And so I, below that, I just glued a really thin piece of ribbon to it to keep all the, um, all the little feathers in place and then cut that fat one off the top and then, um, and then glued that on. And then I trimmed the front so that it would be shorter and then it would have that train in the back. And so I put the feathers on first and then I started gluing on the little, little pieces of beaded trim on the bodice and then glued enough on that it cascaded over where the feathers were glued on to the, the it was below the waist at the lowest point of the dress form. And then um, the, the uh, an idea for you, the beaded trim wasn't exactly the right color green to go with the peacock feathers. So I use some alcohol ink to change the color of the beaded trim. And that's always great because alcohol ink is transparent. So you won't lose any of the sparkle on the trim. And that way you don't have to worry in, you could also just buy a, you know, pretty trim that's, that's white and then dye it to be any color that you want. So that's another way to get things to, to match and be exactly the right color. This dress is uh, started by painting the dress form white. And then the bodice, I took faux suede and cut it into strips, like say the width of, of ribbon. You could use ribbon instead if you had a ribbon like that. The ribbon I had that was like velvet was just too thick. So that's why I ended up using the strips of uh, 
of the uh, faux suede. And then the, the skirt itself is just strips, more strips of ribbon. And then I uh, did ribbon around the waist to hide where the two sets, uh, the black and the, and the stripe uh, came together. And then on the back, I added a bow with the uh, striped ribbon. This last dress, it could be a wedding dress. And uh, again, I've taken a piece of uh, lace uh, lace trim and glued it to the bodice and I did glue two pieces of lace together the lace underneath is just different but it was more solid because there were too many holes that you could see through and then for the skirt I took a couple layers of white tulle or uh, kind of an off-white tulle and then I laid two more layers of decorative lace on top of that and just ran a, a, a stitch through it uh, to gather it up and then I glued that on to the hip area and then to cover the stitch line there, uh, the, the thread, I ended up putting a ribbon around that and then tying it and gluing it on the back. And so that gave me kind of a wedding type dress. For the flatter dresses, um, the bodice that I used as a base to glue on the fabrics and laces and whatnot comes from this dress form collage sheet. And so that's the uh, that's what you're seeing that the dress is wrapped around. And if you want something a little smaller scale, I do have one that has uh, two different sizes on it that are a smaller scale than the one that I used for this project. So just like with the 3D dress forms, all I'm doing is gluing um, fabric and paper and uh, lace trim around the dress form. So I started by um, adding a piece of uh, paper first because this trim was uh, very see-through, the netting was, and then uh, added, then wrapped that around and glued it in place and then wrapped around uh, this trim and glued that in place. And you don't have to worry about the back if you're hanging it on a wall because you're not going to see the back. And then I cut out one of the flowers and used that for the bodice and I glued that on next. This one is the same way. The difference is the bottom is a, is a piece of fabric and then the top is a piece of beaded trim. That, uh, so I put the skirt on first and then, um, and then glued it and then put that beaded trim on top of that. Now the next one is a combination of fabric and beaded trim. And so I cut out a strip of fabric, glued that on and then cut out a piece of the beaded trim for the skirt, put that on. Then I used another piece of the trim for the bodice, glued that on, and then did a ribbon in the middle uh, to hide where the two meet. Now this last one's probably the, the most complicated one. Um, underneath, I took a strip of sheer fabric, and then I the top is pieces of fabric, which I kind of cut in a triangle, and then folded them and ironed them into these little panels. And so I glued the sheer fabric on the little dress form first, then I glued each panel on, and then the top is another strip of beaded trim, but I glued it onto the back side of the fabric, which is gold, uh, because it would have been too sheer. And then of course, then glued that around the dress form. Lastly, I wanted to mention the greenery on the decks. Um, the last video I did of the flower shop, uh, this, uh, leaf collage sheet was what I used to do a lot of the greenery in that and that's also where I got the leaves for the greenery uh, that I'm using in those pots on each side of the uh, window and just to kind of jazz up the deck and give it a little bit of color. That wraps up the House of Fashion. Below in the description area you will find links to the other related project videos that I mentioned during this one. Um, you'll also find the link to my blog post that goes along with this where you'll find more images, information on all the new collage sheets, and a detailed supply list. You'll also find uh, the free wood floor that I use collage sheet. I'll have that for you so that you can download that. Coming up next will be, in about two weeks, will be the elevator. And also I'm going to have some separate things like a street artist who will be uh, selling paintings and that will kind of be uh, an extra piece that goes along with that. Then following that, there's going to be a couple of sort of faux businesses on the second floor sides uh, that will be made out of small bay windows so it'll look like there are more businesses. And one will be an apothecary and the other one will be a bookstore. So stay tuned for more.